All right, it is time for the crossover with our pals Don Taylor and Rick Dollywall from Donnie and Dolly on Check TV. You can check them out Monday to Friday, 10 to noon on Check TV. The crossover is brought to you by Basant Motors, home of over 400 pre-owned vehicles and where the players go. Rick, Donnie, how's it going? Very, very well, very well, very good. Just finishing up a, a fun show. I'm glad to hear it. Is the studio cold, Donnie? <laughs> Uh, you know what? It, it, honestly, I like to keep it. Uh, uh, I've got a very imp important appointment I need to get to, not to rush things along. Oh, okay. I okay. like to keep the studio. I like to keep the studio cool, cold. Okay, like like David Letterman. I'm not saying I'm in his league. I'm just saying that's what about, about I like. Rick and Ryan are, are are they seem like old men here. They want it to be a million degrees, and we fight about it all the time. Today's a little on the cool side, and I like it. I got a shirt underneath. <clears throat> I got two shirts on because oh, good. good. You got I'll two shirts something. and a parka. It, on, it's Rick. like and a parka. It, it's like minus twenty in here. We're in the bottom of a building. Taylor that's won't great. let us turn the heat on. No, that's not true. I, I like, get outnumbered all the time. I ask for the heat to get cranked, and they won't let me turn the heat up. I'm telling you, it's a, it, it's really cold in our Mr. studio. Mr. Fort St. John likes it warm and toasty. Yeah, when Donnie and I were paying our dues up north, it was cold. I, I will say that. But you had, you had the heat on, I'm sure, when you were working up north, right, Rick? That's how you survived. You have to run the heat up oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Taylor here won't let us turn the heat on. No. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You make me sound like some sort of tyrant. We are. <laughs> or, or at least a reptile. It's not like that at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Old-blooded. I just, like, I, I've heard of, you know, people like... Him. Like guys won't let their families turn on the heat at home, right? Because they don't want the heating bill to go up. But oh, yeah, I'm surely you're not on the hook for the heating bill, Donnie. Oh, I I, I run this whole operation. Yes, I am on the hook for the uh, <laughs> heating bill and, and, okay. and, and everything else, coffee, you name it, everything. That explains a lot. All right, we were just uh, – I, I know you guys talked to J.P. Barry today. There's reports out there about Tyler Myers, so there's yep. a lot to get into. We were just having a quick conversation about uh, Mike Yo leaving the organization, which was announced yesterday, and kind of what the coaching staff might look like next year because, as we were saying, right now only one full-time assistant for Rick, T Rick Tockett on staff. That's Adam Foote. Of course, there's Sergey Gonchar, who's part-time. You know, the Sedins who are doing development work as well. Rick, do you have a sense of uh, you know what this, what the direction this uh, this is going in here? Uh, the coaching, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. see what I have to deal with no, here. Uh, he said the direction. It, it was bad. It was a poor question. I'll, 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 own Myers. I'll own it. I'll own it. The direction of the no, thermos is a fabulous question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he rattled off Tyler Myers, then went into the coaching. Who's the defenseman? Said, okay. Yeah. I, with the coaching thing, it's caught me off guard, guys. This is the second coach that's rejected a contract offer in the last week, left the organization. Uh, first, Jeremy Carlton, a coach, by the way, they raved about, and he's no longer here. Now, Mike Yo, he's joined the, uh, he joined the team in the Bruce Boudreau in the final season. Uh, Yo was offered a one-year deal. That's not exactly a ringing endorsement, guys. Coming, uh, hey, we loved the job you did. We had a great season. Hey, come back for one more year. That was not, to me, a ringing endorsement. Uh, but here's what I'll say. Coaches are no different than players. Uh, they'd like to see raises, uh, too. They'd like to see term on contracts. They want to climb the ladder. They want to become head coaches. They're no different than the players. Uh, they want to reach the absolute top of their profession as well. Uh, there are so many coaches. Uh, you know, last night, somebody said to me, you know, there's so many coaches in the NHL looking for assistance right now, like all these new guys getting hired, and it's a good time to get offers if you're a coach. It's just a really good time. And I think Donnie's mentioned this. In Vancouver, you got to look at the way Tockett, coach of the year, he's going to get an extension. His assistant coaches, Foot and Gonchar, are really good. I, I just don't see a path to development to be in a, a, the path to get being a head coach in Vancouver. <laughs> like, I mean, if the way Tockett's going, he should get a four or five year extension. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. So, the, a lot of these guys might be thinking, you know what? I, I don't think there's a path to being a head coach. But uh, uh, don't blame the coaches. Uh, they're like the players and like everyone else in society when their contracts are up. 
they want the best uh, possible deal as uh, well. I just think visually it might be really surprising for yeah. a, a lot of people just because so many times over the last couple of years – you see Rick Tockett, and you know this, Thomas, Rick Tockett constantly talk with Mike Yo on the bench during crucial moments in a game. He does the strategy at the end of games on the whiteboard, or not at the end of games, but near the end of games on the whiteboard when there's a timeout and sometimes to talk to the, to the players, talk and defer, uh, defer to him. So like visually, I found it uh, surprising. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. And, and like Rick says, you know, both Mike Yo and Jeremy Colton are former NHL head coaches, you know, and the guy in front of them just won an Adams Award, yep. so they don't they don't That's see it. that path. But I just I, I always noticed that the uh, yeah, those crucial moments that he would always talk with Mike Yo. I just think there's it's very unlikely that an assistant coach is looking at his options and thinking, well, this coach is too secure. You know, like coaches are also teammates, right? Like. An, an assistant coach tends to want to be part of a winning organization, not because they're going to take the head guy's job, but because they're going to get a job elsewhere as a result of being part of a successful group. You know, I, I mean, if Mike Yo surfaces, and I saw Patrick Johnston at the province float Toronto as, as a possibility, given the pre-existing relationship between Barube and Yo, it's like right. Yo's going to end up on a staff with another coach who's signed long-term. So I... I, and, you know, I, I'm sure in Colleton's case, you know, uh, again, like it, it, whether you're being held in reserve or, or building your, you know, sort of um, resume in the American League, wh whether or not you have a chance to take over from the main guy within your organization, you know, you, you want to be part of a, a successful group. And this club seems to be on the rise. Like, I'd be stunned if that's the motivation and not just an overall sort of um, – that, that you know dollars and cents approach that these coaches just don't like their the offers that they're getting and and you know mm. uh, that to me is sort of interesting um just given how much money i think we expect this organization to pay players over the course of the next six weeks rick what, what do you think the budget impact of this is? is is it budget or is it something else it's a combination of everything uh, uh Carlton's a little different than uh yo because He's like that player in the American League trying to get to the NHL. And, you know, he's already had the sniff uh, head coach in Chicago. Uh, but he's totally different than Yo. Uh, Yo, is, if it was just dollars and cents, I could see it being, you know what, hey, I, I'd, I'd like to have term. I'd like to have more money. But Carlton's a little different. I mean, he still wants to get back. You have to admit his goal would be to become a head coach in the NHL. Yeah, but the other thing, uh, Thomas, uh, you have to look at how many coaches have been fired since last year, 18, 19? I mean, yeah. the turnover oh, yeah. is amazing. And these guys got to be thinking, okay, are owners that impatient now where they're just going to fire everybody? How many guys, and Donnie mentioned this, how many guys were fired this year with their new contract not even kicking in yet? So, oh, I, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, look what the coaches are thinking. Head coaches don't have much time in the NHL uh, to turn things around anymore. Yeah, but I never heard anybody say Mike Yo was doing a bad job. Like I never, I never like again, Thomas. No. You you would obviously hear more than I do, but I never heard anybody saying he was he, he was doing a, a really poor no a, a poor job. But maybe that one year offer uh, speaks to that. I'm not sure. And same with Jeremy Carlton, right? We never heard anything but really, really positive things about yeah. the work he was doing yeah. uh, in Abbotsford. Um, okay, on the player side of things, we heard the report on 32 Thoughts from Elliot Friedman that there's uh, real optimism that the Canucks and Tyler Myers might be able to work something out. And not a big surprise, right? We know about his connections here. You heard him speak last week, and he was very upfront and honest about how much he'd like to come back. Rick, what are you hearing on uh, on a potential deal between the Canucks and Myers? Could this be something that they get out of the way relatively quickly here before, you know, we're still a month plus away from the opening of free agency? Well, his agent was on and we yeah. asked him about that, uh, JP Berry, and JP just said that they know we want to be there, uh, but they got other priorities. Um, I, I, I don't sense there's anything imminent with uh, Tyler Myers, like something's going to happen today or tomorrow. But I will say this. I have been saying for weeks and weeks that Myers wants back in Vancouver. He's the easiest contract to do. He's going to go from $6 million to around $3 million. 
He's got the offseason home in Kelowna. He told JP many months ago, uh, he informed him that uh, get the deal done in Vancouver. The Canucks know this. Of all the Canucks UFAs, this is the simplest contract to do because he's the only one that's going to take a pay cut. The rest of them all got their hands out for big raises. So the Can- And the Canucks can't let Myers and Zadorov both go. There's, that's too much size. One of those are, are going to be back. And the simple contract, everybody, and I've been saying this for a long time, is Myers. He's taken the pay cut. No one else has taken the pay cut that he's taken. Yeah, and then we had J.P. Barry on, as Rick mentioned, uh, Tyler Myers' agent, among others, Elias Pettersson included. But uh, usually when you ask uh, an agent a question like that, like, does Tyler Myers want to come back? Uh, the answer will be something like, yeah, but you know what? A lot of other teams want yep, him. Yep. Uh, you know, we're not committing to him. But, but he, he just focused, JP did, uh, on Vancouver. And that that wasn't normal agent talk for no. me. Mm-hmm. So I, I think, like Rick says, that, well, this will definitely be the, I don't know if it will be easy, but it will be the easiest. And then you have the fact that he lives in Kelowna, and my answer to that initially was, well, so does every other player in the National <laughs> Hockey League, pretty much, or at least 80% of them. And uh, somebody made the point to me that, you know, one thing you got to remember is that, you know, Tyler's got a young family. They're established. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a lot easier to, you know, make that move and set things up for your kids, Kelowna to Vancouver. And I'm sure they're set up already for Tyler than it is uh, Kelowna to Carolina or, yep. or, or somewhere else. Yeah, big time. So, Rick, let me ask you a question really quick about Myers because I, I agree with you. I expect that he he will return, but we are talking about a guy who you know among all unrestricted free agent defenders who shoot right, right? Only Dylan Demello and Brandon Montour had more points this season. He's six foot seven. Uh, we saw you know how well he played defensively in the playoffs. The Canucks had him matching up against Connor McDavid. You know, and, and McDavid only had two mm-hmm. breakout games across that seven-game series between the Canucks and the Oilers. We know Myers isn't getting six, but if he decides to test the market, I mean, four times three, is that out of the question? Like, this, he's a 35, four-year-old player, excuse me. This is his last chance to sign one of those deals that's not a 35-plus contract where, where things kind of shift. Um, he's going to get a pay cut, but is there any question about sort of uh, how difficult it still might be to find common ground given sort of the money he'd have to leave no, on the no, table no. for him to come in at a number that fans in this market anyway would be like hometown discount because I don't think fans would look no, at four no. times three and say man Myers really did the team a solid JP the first sentence out of JP's mouth today was they know we want to be there like, what else do you yep. need to know? He's not yeah. thinking July 1st. He's thinking Vancouver. Yeah. He has informed his agent to get the deal done in Vancouver. It doesn't matter. You, it, it would have to be a colossal fail between these two to not get a deal done. If the guy hits the free agent market, I think he can get over four. But the Canucks to get him in the, in the low threes would be a real, real good deal. And maybe two or three years. Um, and, you know, that guy has taken a lot of heat in this market. You know, Canucks Twitter, and they call him a giraffe and all that crap. You know what? This guy had a good year. You know, uh, Travis Green played the hell out of him. Boudreaux played the yeah. hell out of him. And Rick Tockett's playing the hell out of him. I mean, every coach he's had, they've, all they've ever done right, is they, play. They don't care about the contracts. The yeah, co- they, the, they the don't care about don't. the contracts. Well, but yeah. what Thomas said, sorry, sorry, Rick, but sure. what, what Thomas said there about, you know, maybe somebody will come out of their boots uh, to sign Tyler to his last uh, big contract. And you just mentioned maybe maybe uh, Travis Green will pull for him in, in Ottawa. Oh, oh, there's just, a, you know, yeah. No, hey. Somebody who knows him and, and somebody who, who played him a whole lot, like Boudreaux and, and like Rick Tockett. What a great point by Don. And the other guy, uh, if you're a right shot defenseman and you're hitting July 1st, you're going to get paid. Look at Kristanov. You know, I heard yesterday, it's not, you know, they, they could command uh, four years, and he's 34, I think. He just turned 34. They could command four and over five. So if you're a right shot veteran defenseman heading into July 1st, you're going to do fine. And if Myers wants to go, he doesn't, though. Uh, JP just told us he wants mm-hmm. to get it done in Vancouver. But if that guy hit the market, he'd do fine, too. Right shot veteran D no are going to get would. paid July 1st. 
Well, and I think it's a good point, Rick, that you say when J.P. Barry is so upfront, it's so rare for an agent to not hedge yeah. and say, well, you know, yeah. we like Vancouver, but we're exploring. You know, he was just so direct and honest, like, yeah, no, we want to be here. No. That tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Now, to your point about the I'll right shot. I'll be surprised if they don't. I'll yeah. be surprised. If they to don't your point about the right shot defenseman, he's not a UFA, Likewise, he's clear. an RFA, but we know how robust the market always is for right shot defensemen. How much does that strengthen Philip Ronick's negotiating position, right? Especially if a deal isn't done before July 1st and there's this spending spree on uh, on UFA right shot defensemen. Does that make things a little bit more complicated for the Canucks on Philip Ronick? Well, you have to give him a million more than what he actually wants, just yeah. based on last week's interview. <laughs> Don't we want more of Philip Aronic in the media? That was just so entertaining. And, you know, I mean, Darnell Nurse tried to surpass that today, and I think he fell short. It was just outstanding. Like I, 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 I tweeted out that I thought it was it was entertaining with the sound down. This, the, his eyes, I absolutely <laughs> loved it. From a hockey point of view, you know, one thing that's big for him in, in Vancouver is that Quinn Hughes has had his best season, uh, has had his best season as a Canuck in the National Hockey League. We're, we believe, everybody believes that he's going to win the Norris Trophy. How much did Philip Ronick have to do with that? Maybe Quinn Hughes, I would think, is tired of changing partners left and right. But one thing that was said, and this is interesting, and I think this is going to have a lot to do with the Canucks' decision. I, I don't know, and it, I don't know why this didn't get talked a whole uh, uh, a lot. I, I dropped the ball. You certainly dropped the ball, Rick. But <laughs> but uh, Patrick Alvin saying that he felt that Quinn Hughes and Philip Peronic could drive their own pair, mm -hmm. each drive their yeah. own pair, which we saw earlier on, and then of course they settled into Hughes and Peronic as their number one pairing, and rightfully so. That the season was successful, but I, I found that interesting. If they believe that Peronic can. Uh, can do that if they truly believe that. I mean, you know, Hughes can do it, but if they truly believe that Hirona can do it, well, then I don't see any reason why they, you know, with an RFA and them controlling him for another year, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't come back. Yeah, and if he did do his, uh, if he controlled his own second pair, Hironic, uh, then they wouldn't have to go out and get a Tanev. Then they wouldn't have to go out and get. Uh, and plus, if they bring still need somebody for yeah, you still in the third pair. But uh, I, I could tell you right now. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Hironic. You've heard his name in in the Carolina net just, uh, uh trade rumors as well, right? Carolina's got issues. They got four UFA defensemen coming up and some big ones too. So you know, and they got I think another couple of guys who only got one year left on their deals. Their their defense is in in disarray. Man, the kid J Jalen Chatfield we just saw today. Yeah, the projection. If somebody projected him at five years and four point eight. I mean, again, the importance of right shot D. And, and, and Jalen Chatfield's agent, if he was smart, would take him to July 1st because I think Jalen Chatfield on July 1st will do quite fine. With, Do we really need to see Hironic drive his own pair? I'm, I, like, I like his work with Quinn Hughes just fine. Yeah. You know, if it's you're like, gonna, if you're I don't gonna need invest to hear that Paul much. Simon without Garfunkel. <laughs> I want to hear our well, go, I want to hear Simon on, and on. Garfunkel. Hold on, but Paul, Paul, Paul Simon. Without Simon. <laughs> Paul Simon had some great solo albums, yeah. though. The concern is that Hronix more Art Garfunkel use or, That's or fine. dancer, and that Hughes is That's Paul fine. Simon. I, you know what? You you say Paul Simon had some great solo albums. I don't listen to them. They're not. I don't. I don't regularly put them on. They weren't featured in The Graduate. Like not a big, I don't know. I can't even name you a Paul Simon fam? song I like. I don't care. I wow. want Sound of Silence, baby. I'm just saying, if you're going to invest yeah. a, up to $8 million in, in a defenseman, you better be confident that they don't need to be stapled to Quinn Hughes. Like, you'd like to at least have options, even if that's your number one choice for where to play them. Hey, if you elevate Quinn Hughes, I'll pay for that. That sounds great. Give me more of that. Well, it's, no. they had a good season, right? The, the, the team as a yeah. whole had a, had a solid season. So do, do you want to uh, mess with that? But I'm just playing off of what I heard at the during the end of the season interviews. And, you know, Patrick Alvin saying, hey, you know, maybe it's time for these guys to be split up and see if we can spread the, the, the wealth uh, a bit. By the way, I'm with you on Paul Simon. It's never really hit me. Graceland, I, I everybody loved that album. I that was good. Graceland was good. I wasn't love, there. That was good. I wasn't there. Love Graceland. Love Graceland. A big 50 mess. Ways to Leave a Lover. And I, uh, it, yeah, come on. Yeah. Yes. Come yeah. on. What are we talking Graceland about? Graceland was fine. 
It's more than fine. Graceland's a I don't even know if 50 classic, Ways to Leave a Lover was on Graceland. Classic album. Classic album. Anyways, we'll let, we'll let you go. His arms are we are we supposed to like be Are we supposed Arctic to be talking parka. about 50 cents? 50 cents. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we supposed to be uh Aren't we supposed to be talking about 50 cents in Vancouver? 50 cents on the dollar. That's what you want Tyler Myers to get paid, Rick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, we'll yeah. let you go. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> he's. Uh, I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> you're not. A, you're not. Okay, a 50 listen. Cents let guy, me get Rick? this in. All right, go ahead. No, I, I. That's not my music. I don't bop and hop to that. There's More no Paul way. Simon. Oh, I love Paul Simon, uh, but, but uh, I'm not a Fifty Cents guy. <laughs> Maybe next year. Well, you quit the music <laughs> stuff. Go, get go, this in. go. It, uh, listen, uh, not hearing the Canucks are close with uh, Joshua guys sounds like a lot of work to do uh, before a deal gets done. So we'll monitor that. But uh, there seems to be uh, a difference of opinion on what his worth is. So we'll keep an eye on that, guys. All right. Uh, and Rick, things could change ahead. with one phone call. You guys know that. Of course. Things can change you. with one phone call. You guys know. Yeah. yeah thank, th- thanks for that, Rick. Thank goodness we got that <laughs> in right at the end of the segment. In. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Rick. All right. We'll let you guys go. We'll let you get out of the freezing cold studio. Donnie, you go to your appointment. Uh, we'll do this again next week. Yes. Beautiful. Right. 50 cents. Thanks, guys. 50 cents. That is Don Taylor and Rick Dollywall from Donnie and Dolly on Check TV.